So let me ask you this. Are you using Slide Masters when designing an e-learning course in Articulate Storyline? Well, if not, you're missing out on a huge opportunity to save time and help you keep your courses looking consistent. And the good news is they work no differently than how they work in PowerPoint. And in this video, I'll show you how. Stick around. Hey there folks, Tim Slade here from the eLearning Designers Academy. You know, as I've shared many times before, when you're first learning how to use Articulate Storyline and when you're creating a new project, one of the helpful things to remember is how similar it is to PowerPoint. And, you know, as I always like to say, if you already know how to do something in PowerPoint, then more often than not, you already know how to do it in Storyline. And one area where this couldn't be any more true is with Slide Masters. So let's jump over to Storyline and I'll show you how you can create your own Slide Masters for your own projects. All right, so here I am in Articulate Storyline where I'm working to build an onboarding course for a client that I'm working with. And to start building my project, I wanna start creating some master slides. So before I show you a practical example of how master slides uh, might be set up and how they look in Storyline, let's explain how master slides work uh, in the first place. As I mentioned in the opener, they work exactly the same way as they do in PowerPoint. So I have this blank slide here and to edit my master slides in Storyline, all I have to do is go to the view tab in the ribbon here and you'll notice there's an option here for slide master. Now one thing to be aware of is that Storyline has a second type of master slides that you can edit which are feedback masters. That's a separate topic for a separate video for a separate day. We're just going to focus on our basic slide masters. Now to edit my slide masters, I'll go ahead and click here to go into slide uh, master view and this is where I can edit and create my slide masters and the first time you come in here you know this might look familiar because like I said it's exactly the same as it is in PowerPoint but you might have found yourself getting a little overwhelmed or confused about how slide masters actually work now let me do a quick explanation first, and then I'll show you how to build some slide masters. So you'll notice over here in the uh, sidebar here on the left, there are different thumbnails for different slide layouts. Now here at the top, you'll notice this slide's a little bit larger, and these little ones underneath it look like little subslides, if you will, right? And there's this parent-child relationship when it comes to slide masters. So this very first slide here at the top, this is the slide master. And anything I put on this slide is going to automatically be applied to all of the subsequent slides underneath it. And these are known as layouts. So we have the slide master, the parent slide, and then the children, which are the layouts. And you'll see how that works here in a moment. But let me give you an example of what I mean. Anything I put on here will automatically get applied to the layout. So for example, let's do something ridiculous. I'm gonna insert uh, a shape. And let's do a big old blue square up here in the corner. Now you'll notice I put that square there and it's automatically applied to every single slide um, in the layout underneath the slide master. I can't click on it, I can't edit it. Why? Because it lives up here on the slide master. Now, how does this relate to our different layouts? Well, what's great about this is I can put anything on my slide master that I want to be visible on all of my layouts, but then I can create individual layouts. So for example, on this layout, maybe I want to, of course, I would never do this in the real world, but we're gonna put a smiley face here, right? We all like smiley faces. You'll notice that it's only on this layout, right? And then maybe down here, I wanna do something different. Let's do a different shape. Let's do a lightning bolt. We love lightning bolts, right? It's only available on that layout. So what this allows me to do is create a master slide where we have global design elements, if you will, and then individual layouts for each item that I might want to have represented on uh, my slides, right? So I'm gonna delete all this stuff. That's kind of how the relationship works between the slide master and the master slides. Now, pretty simple, but how does that actually relate to creating an actual set of slide masters that you can use to create a course. Well, like I said, I'm working on this project for an onboarding course for a client, and I have some assets that they've provided me that I'm gonna to use to create a set of slide masters as an example. Like I said, anything I put on here will automatically be applied on my subsequent layout. So let's say, for example, I wanted to have a background graphic on all of my slides, right? I can put anything on my slide master. So in this example, I'm just gonna insert a picture. I'll do a picture from file in my ribbon. And uh, from the assets that my client has provided me, maybe I'm going to have this background graphic on all of my slides, right? And I'll take a moment to bring it on to 
uh, the project and here it is, right? Now it's sitting on top of those text box placeholders. I'll talk about that here in a moment. So I'm gonna right click and send it to the back. Of course, if I wanted to, I could have gone to um, my uh, slide master tab here and set the background style and insert an image. Some people do that, I rarely do that. You know, it's a matter of preference. I'm more of, uh, you know, uh, I, my preference is just to put the image on the on the slide itself. So we have a background and we have the subsequent different layouts. Now this is where we can create different versions of the slide master. So for example, here's our title only layout. Let's say I wanted to set up a title slide layout that included the client's logo, and then I wanted to adjust the positioning of these, this text placeholder for my slide title. So let's get the logo on the screen and then uh, we'll mess around with it a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the insert tab. We'll do a picture from file and I'm gonna bring in their logo here and we're just going to do the Milton um, it's Milton imaging I'm gonna bring in that logo here and I'll make it a little bit smaller and let's say I want that logo uh, to be right here and as part of it it's going to include a shape behind it maybe something like this that goes to the edge of the screen of course I'm just making this up as I go if this were real world I would be following my client style guide but I don't have one right now so I'm just kind of making it up and winging this as I go which is you know quite often one of the things that we have to do uh, when you're designing slides so I'm gonna give it a white fill turn off the outline and maybe I'll bring this logo to the front right and that logo is going to live I'll just put it right about there it's gonna live here. And then maybe my slide title is gonna be over here uh, to the right of it, right? So I can move these placeholders wherever I want. So in this example, maybe I'm gonna bring this placeholder here and I'll put it right there. And instead of it being center justified, I'm going to make it left justified just like that. And we'll come back to that here in a moment. Maybe that's my title slide, right? Pretty simple stuff. Now, what about a content slide like this? Here we have a content slide with a slide title and slide text. Again, I can set this up however I want. Maybe in this example, we just wanna have a big white space, but then I can duplicate it and do a couple of other things with it. So let me show you. Maybe in this example, I'm just gonna insert a shape and uh, that's going to exist like this, you know, right in the center of my slide like that. And we'll give it a fill of white. Again, no outline, don't need that outline. We'll send this to the back like this. And of course I can adjust the placement of all of these elements as well, right? And maybe put this as being left justified over here like that. Maybe that's a basic, I'm gonna use my arrange tools to make sure that's perfectly centered here. Right, maybe that's a basic content slide. And I could do the same thing for this question slide layout the uh, and these other ones. And here's a whole blank slide layout, et cetera, et cetera. Now, of course, I could stop here. This is pretty simple, but maybe we want to create additional layouts for different use cases. Maybe I want to have a slide that has a slide title and text and an image, right? So I can just duplicate this layout and I can start creating multiple variations of it, right? So maybe, for example, this is going to be like a 50-50 slide or three quarters of a slide where we're going to have... Uh, some text here, again, a slide title, I'll bring that over here. Here's our text placeholder. And uh, maybe I, I, this is space here for an image or something like that. Maybe I'll bring this over a little bit more like this. And maybe what's gonna happen here is I'm going to have an image. And let's just insert, we'll do something from the content library and we'll do uh, medical. Let's see what comes up. Right? Mm. Obviously this image would be contextual to whatever I'm talking about, but mm, let's just find one that makes sense. Maybe this person here doing some diagnostic testing. We'll throw that on the screen and maybe I'll put that here. I'm just resizing it kind of play with where I'd want it to be. And then we can crop the image. As such, right? There's a different slide layout. Now, 
it, would I normally put the image actually on the slide like this? Maybe. Maybe I just want to have a placeholder for me as a designer or another designer that I'm working with to insert an image. Well, I can duplicate this layout. And instead of having this image here, maybe I have an image placeholder. So under the Slide Master tab here in the ribbon, you'll notice there's an option here to insert placeholders. And there's different types of placeholders I can create, content placeholders, text placeholders, and of course we have picture placeholders and a few others. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just draw a picture placeholder here, and you'll see that I can replace this uh, with an actual image uh, when I apply the slide layout, right? So you can kind of see how that works as well. So I can create a whole bunch of different uh, slide masters and layouts. Now, the final thing that I'll point out here is I can also edit the style of my text here. So for example, let's say for my slide titles, I didn't want it to be, didn't want it to be this default open sans. Maybe we're going to go with something like this, whatever this is. <laughs> maybe that's going to be um, my title placeholder. And maybe I want to change it to a different shade of uh, blue. So maybe it's going to be like this that kind of matches the slide. I don't really like that. Let's use the eyedropper here and we'll choose this color here, right? And then maybe my body text is going to be, I don't know, it's going to be this articulate light uh, font here and the color is going to be this off color here, this off uh, black color here, all right? So I can apply that and that'll also get applied to my slides. I could have also done that up here as well. Um, but once you do uh, apply the different uh, styles to the text, the other thing you might do to help you set up your master slides is also set up your text style. So I can come up here and change this heading and I can make it um, update style from selection and then it updates that there like that. And same thing for my normal text. I could select this and do my normal text and update style from selection. And now in the future, I can apply this style here. Let's say, for example, instead of this being normal text, I can be heading one, right? That's hard to see because it's obviously uh, on this blue background, but here you can see that's been automatically applied as well. That's how that works. So let me close out a slide master view and show you now how we use these different layouts. So one of the things a lot of people struggle with is when you're in slide master view, you forget to exit out of slide master view. So if I go back to my slide master view tab up here, I can go ahead and close out of slide master view. And now I can start applying these layouts to my slides. So by default, we have that blank layout, but from the home tab in the ribbon, I can do apply layout and you'll see all of my different slide masters. So here's the title and content. There's my content placeholder. We call this my introduction. And here is some really great content. And there's my slide. And now if I add a new slide, I can do new slide, basic layouts, and maybe we want to add in this slide here. Here's my title. We'll call this objectives. And maybe I'm gonna do some learning objectives here. And then here is my um, placeholder, and I have a couple of different options. I can insert place, uh, content from the content library or insert picture from file. Maybe I wanna see if I have something here in my brand assets. I have no idea if I do. Let's find something that works. Maybe I'm talking about this MRI machine and I can bring that in just like that and apply that there. So that's how those placeholders work. All right, so that's how to create your own slide masters in Articulate Storyline. It's pretty simple stuff. And while it seems like it can be time consuming on the front end to create you know, slide masters, they ultimately will save you time in the long run as you design out the rest of your course. And as I mentioned at the start of this video, they'll help you keep your courses looking consistent. So I wanna know what other tips or questions do you have about using slide masters in Articulate Storyline? Share your thoughts, questions, and tips by commenting down below. And of course, while you're down there, make sure to check out all the links down in the description for all of my Articulate Storyline related resources, how-to videos, and articles. Otherwise, I wanna thank you so much for watching. If you haven't done so already, make sure to click that like, subscribe, and bell button to get alerted the next time I publish a video, just like this one. And of course, join us inside the eLearning Designers Academy where we help new instructional designers and eLearning developers grow their careers by focusing on skills first. Otherwise, my name is Tim Slade, and until next time, I'll see you around.